When venturing into the world of property buying or selling in the UK, it's crucial in my view to understand the complexities of stamp duty land tax, SDLT. SDLT can significantly impact your financial outlay at the start when you're buying a property uh, and it's definitely not a one size fits all tax. The amount that you pay depends on various factors such as the price of the property, your buyer status uh, and how many properties you're buying among other things. However, there is a ray of hope for those considering probate properties where unique rules and potential exemptions come into play. So probate properties, a brief overview uh, of pro buying properties through probate often associated with a legal process for managing a deceased person's estate and fulfilling their will frequently involves property if they obviously own property. These properties aptly named probate properties for our conversation today form a distinct category. It's important to note that residential property encompasses land, buildings, suitable for living and associated rights and structures. In simple terms, a dwelling is a place with everyday living facilities, privacy and is fit for residential use. Dealing with complex estates, many opt to engage probate solicitors for obvious reasons uh, and they help them to administer uh, the estate of the deceased person. Probate properties come with unique stamp duty uh, tax rules which both buyers and sellers should grasp in my view. Stamp duty on probate properties, typically purchasing a probate property involves paying stamp duty land tax. If you already own a property, an additional 3% SDLT surcharge applies. However, there is room for a stamp duty exemption under very particular rules offering financial respite. First things first, don't get confused. Inheritance versus purchase. Inherited estates are exempt from SDLT but may incur inheritance tax based on someone's overall value of their estate. You can only claim SDLT exemption for properties where SDLT is paid excluding inherited estates. But if you are buying an unrelated property from probate, here are the exemption conditions and note these because these may come in handy. You purchase from a personal representative of a deceased individual. You are a property trader, not a sole trader, i.e. you're not a, you don't have any investment properties, you buy fixed flip properties, so you buy and sell. Understanding property trader status. To qualify as a property trader, you must fit the government's definition as per the HMRC website. A property trader can be a company, an LLP or a partnership with corporate partners, sometimes called uh, a mixed partnership and some refer to it as a hybrid structure. The business involves buying and selling dwellings. A deceased person must have lived in the property as their primary or sole residence within two years before their passing. Buyers can qualify for the exemption by spending either £10,000 or 5% of the purchase price, but the 5% is uh, limited to £20,000 on the entire refurbishment. This condition can be, let's say, intricate as it involves understanding the difference between development and safety expenses. So let's look at de development versus safety. If your planned spending exceeds the permitted development limit, you will not benefit from this particular exemption. However, if you allocate a portion of your budget to necessary safety improvements, for example, rewiring, addressing hazards, so on and so forth, you can make a case for the primary focus on safety rather than development. And this is based on fact, you can't just make this up, it depends on what you spend your money on. And therefore, it's important that you comprehensively document your expenses, uh, especially in relation to uh, the safety aspect uh, to me, make sure that we can justify and demonstrate what, what's actually happened. We then come on to the permitted area. And in very short uh, terms, the land acquired must not exceed the permitted area, which is 10,000 square meters uh, or half a hectare, or a larger area required for the reasonable enjoyment of a dwelling. Exceeding this particular limit uh, may result in partial relief with the excess land subject to stamp duty land tax. Understanding SDLT on probate properties is essential for anyone involved in property transactions in the UK. It's a nuanced subject 
with potential substantial savings through exemptions and possibly rebates if you've overpaid uh, and you want to claim a rebate. The key is meticulous planning, accurate documentation and making sure that you understand the guidelines and then you stick to the guidelines. By navigating through this complex area, you can make informed choices and uh, ensure a smooth process when dealing with buying properties through probate. And once you're certain that you meet uh, the conditions and comply with the rules, you can proceed by claiming the exemption. That's all I have for you on this particular topic for now. Uh, if you like the video, click like, make sure you don't forget to click subscribe uh, and I'll keep you updated with more content. Any question on the SDLT, comments below and I'll answer every single one personally.